good morning students welcome back to the academics i am here to teach you about digital signal processing in today's class we are going to see the complete overview of digital signal processing as you all know that in in our previous classes we have learned about signal and system so this is the advanced version of your signal and system in today's sessions we are going to see what is a digital signal processing and what are the topics you are going to cover in digital signal processing so we'll be having the unit 1 it which completely deals with your dft and your fft so this what it is i'm going to teach you second unit unit 2 deals with your iir filters then you you will be having the unit 3 that deals with fir filters then you will be having unit 4 that deals with multi rated digital signal processing and unit 5 it's a continuation of your unit 4 that what is a multi rated digital signal processing in that we are going to see its addressing mode and its instructions so these are the complete content of our digital signal processing so in this what actually we are going to learn is first unit deals with your dft and fft so what is dft stands for it is discrete fourier transform fft stands for fast fourier transforms so these techniques what is you, what is the use of these techniques these techniques are used for converting your dft what is dft actually it's a discrete f stands for fourier t stands for transform so in this what actually we are going to discuss in this we are going to discuss what how the signal we when you had when you are talking about discrete signal when you had x of n how you are converting into x of k because your signals can of two types one could be the analog second would be the digital so what is the analog means a signal which is continuous in time and continuous part when we had this thing we can consider to be it's a dis, it's continuous signal so likewise when i'm talking about when i'm taking one signal like i'm taking one sinusoidal signal so what i can consider for this if i do have t this is my x of t that means for every duration of time my signal is keep on repeating that means whatever the signal they gave you this is considered to be the continuous signal likewise when i am seeing when i just want to convert the same signal if i do have like this if i am having the impulses like this at every particular interval of time it's keep on changing so as you can see this is nothing but the discrete signal so when i am seeing when you had n this is nothing but x of n so how the signal x of n we are going to convert into x of k so that part in detail we are going to see in dft dft is nothing but discrete fourier transform likewise we do have the second part that is considered to be the fft second part we are going to learn is nothing but the fft the fft stands for it's nothing but fast fourier transform so in this fast fourier transform we'll be using a special techniques that is nothing but we are using butterfly diagrams for taking a specific impulses based upon that we'll be converting your signal x of n into a signal x of k or if you had if you had n points you are converting into a specific format that is nothing but the fast fourier transform so in this we completely deals with how this instead of using the formalistic part the formula what we are using instead of using that one we'll use specific graph or chart based upon chart we'll design the same functions so that is also part of unit 1 so in unit 1 what you are going to do you are going to do dft and fft and it some properties of dft <coughs> excuse me some properties of dft also we are going to discuss in the unit 1 so in unit 1 completely deals with discrete fourier transform and the second part would be the fast fourier transform likewise we will be having unit 2 so in unit 2 we are going to discuss the iir what is iir stands for infinite impulse response 
So what is this infinite impulse response? Here also we will be using some impulses. What is that impulses and how the response we can take? And we'll be using two types of transform in it, bilinear transform, imp impulse invariant transform, we'll use it. We'll try to convert our input bits of that specific domain into another specific domain. So this part is considered to be the unit two. So in this, the most important topics or the concepts what we are going to learn is bilinear transformation and second would be impulse invariant technique. So here also we are going to convert your n domain into the s domain then we are converting into z domain. So this already you know z transform this just application part we are going to use in impulse invariant response. So as your DSP completely, the subjects like signal and system where you have seen a signals we have taken and specific systems we have taken and try to solve the problem based upon it. So likewise, in our DSP also it's completely problematic. Here also we are going to see the problematic part is more. So in this also we are going to convert this specific domain like IAR in this we are using bilinear transformation and impulse invariant transformation. We'll try to convert that part and we just want to find out its responses. So likewise, we are going to see the unit 3. So in unit 3, we are going to use FIR. So what is FIR stands for here? I stands for infinite. Here is nothing but we are using the finite. So finite impulse response. So by using the finite impulse response, we are going to convert your impulses into a specific domain by taking the windowing techniques. So here we'll be having a four types of windows as per your syllabus you had. Rectangular window we had, you had hardlet window or triangular window is there. Then you'll be having your Hanning window, Hamming window. We're using these techniques. We'll try to convert our impulses into a specific domain. So that is the unit three. Next, we'll be having the unit four. In so unit four, what we are going to see? So in unit four, we are going to see the multi, multi-rate DSP. So what is multi-rate DSP stands for? It's nothing but multi-rate digital signal processing. So in this, actually, when you see the signal processing, it's nothing but we are having the signal, we'll try to process it. Likewise, we'll be having a specific TMX32064 XX, a specific type of processor we had. We are going to learn its four part. First part, it's architecture. Next part, it's timing diagram. Next part, we are going to see its instructions, addressing modes, and the complete working of it. How this multi-ray DSP processor can be used in digital signal processing. So this, actually, the motive of this subject is that here we are going to take the different signal processing techniques, that techniques we can apply for our processor. So this quietly similar to your MPMC, concepts. Here also we had the four part. First part is architecture we are going to see. Second part we are going to see timing sequence. Next part we are going to see its complete working of it. How it is going to be used. The addressing mode is there and then we'll be having the register. Register bank is there. That complete part we are going to see in unit 4 and unit 5. So this is about your DSP syllabus. So what we have learned till now we talk about DSP having the five units in it. First unit is about discrete Fourier transform, DFT. So in the DFT, we'll be having N domain, we are converting into K domain by taking the impulses. So in the second unit, we are going to talk about your IIR. That is infinite impulse response we had. We'll be using the bilinear transformation, impulse invariant transformation. We're going to solve the specific techniques. Likewise, next we had unit three. In unit three, we are going to discuss about FIR. Whereas in that, what you're going to see, you're going to see is finite impulse response. So in this also, we are using the windowing techniques. So in that windowing techniques, what you're going to do use, you're going to use four types of windowing techniques. First windowing technique is about rectangular window, triangular window, Hanning window, Kaiser window, Hamming window. These are the windows we are using and we are going to convert it and we are going to use finite impulse response part. Then we had unit four and that we are going to see multi-ray DSP because this is about just numerical part we had. Next part we are going to see is nothing but multi-ray DSP. In that, what is the main function of it? In this, we are going to see what is actually the processor. 
how the processor can be used to apply the signals and why the signals can be passed to processor what is the motive behind that and how the signal can be passed based upon it we'll see first architecture of it after knowing the architecture we'll take its registers after taking the registers we'll go for how we can pass a data that is nothing but the addressing mode how we can pass from the data from one part of it to another one the, the way and the, the part what we are passing because we are passing the signals right so when we are passing the signals how effectively we can pass the signals that complete part and the the way we are passing the signal that is nothing but the addressing mode everything we are going to see in unit 4 and unit 5 both are continuation of unit 4 is nothing but the unit 5 so this is how your digital signal processing has been given so in upcoming classes directly we'll move to the unit 1 and we'll start complete discussion of it so be safe thank you for today's sessions and in the next session definitely we are going to start the direct syllabus so thank you